Hello artsy crafty people, how are you doing? Today I'm going to show you a really awesome wood burning technique with this. For those of you who may be new here, I usually use this, a little wood burner, but oh no, today I'm bringing out the big guns and using a propane torch. In this video, I'm going to go over the basics of shoshugiban, which is... Whoa. Just ignore that. In this video, I'm gonna go over the basics of shoshugiban, which is a Japanese technique for preserving wood, but you can also just make really cool patterns on wood with it, as well as artwork. I do have an entire wood burning series where I create different pieces of artwork. So if you're interested in seeing that after watching this video, please check it out in the description box below or the I card up in the corner. Now without further ado, let's head on out to the garage. First order of business, wood selection. You want a soft white wood, something that's not too thin. Construction grade two by fours actually work really well and they are super affordable. So that's great for the bank account. My two by four by eight is white wood. It just said white wood on it. Make sure they are kiln dried and the other piece is pine. You wanna also pay attention to the rings on the edge of the wood to kind of see how tight or loose the grain. It's kind of just personal preference on the style that you're going for. And choose pieces that don't have giant knots on them unless you want that kind of look. Next, I'm going to prep my wood with a sander and you wanna use a fine grit sandpaper for this so it ends up really smooth. I believe mine is 220. Also, if you're wondering, I just purchased my wood from Lowe's and they did cut it down for me. So I have four pieces of the white wood. There are four two foot pieces and I have three pieces of the pine which are also two feet or 24 inches each. You'll see later on that I end up cutting them down a little bit more, but it is nice to have another person just kind of do the work for you if they're offering it for free. So that was really nice. It helped me get it in the car a lot easier. Every time I use this sander, I cannot help but notice the smiley face on the side. Do you guys see that? After sanding the wood and wiping the dust away, I'm just going to lightly spritz some water onto the board with a spray bottle. I don't know that this is completely necessary, but I did see some of the men in the videos I watched do this, but later on I did try without it. I didn't really notice too much of a difference. Also, you notice that I started demonstrating with the propane torch. It does say on the instructions on the back not to hold it upside down, that you wanna hold it upright. The flame will go out every single time. It does not stay for long, so you definitely want to prop the wood up, which I'm about to do, but first let me show you the torch that I am using. It's by the brand Burnzomatic. I think that that is such a clever name. These are pretty affordable as well. You only need to buy one torch attachment and they do come in a set or a pack if you wanna do that. I will list all these items in the description box below if you want to go buy from my Amazon affiliate links. It'll help me out a little bit and and it doesn't cost you any extra. So I'll leave all that below. Once you have the torch attachment, you can use it on any tank and the tanks last a very long time. I don't think I even went through half the tank throughout this entire video. Now I've propped the wooden board upright and I'm going to continue torching it. I shouldn't have to say this, but you want to rest it on something that's not flammable, such as these metal legs on the sawhorse. Don't catch anything on fire, please, including yourself. Don't catch yourself on fire either. I know the safety spiel, but it has to be said, please just be very careful. I have a spray bottle full of water next to me, as you can see, and in that bucket, there's also water. I have the garage door open, so I'm working in a highly ventilated space. And also, it's not a bad idea to have a fire extinguisher accessible to you. This is my very, very first attempt. For this one, I'm going to char the entire board, so I'm not worried about getting it too uniform. I just wanna scorch the wood. Totally obliterate it. No, not really, but just get it as black as you can get it. The knots do take a little bit more effort to burn, but they'll get there. After you start to see cracks and little crumbly areas around the wood, that's when you know that you have charted enough in that area and you can move on to another one. And I also do burn the sides and the edges as well, just so everything kind of looks nice. There is another easier, less labor intensive method that I'll show you after this, but let's stick to this one for now. So some people advised not to use a wire brush because it scratches the wood grain but unless you're very very strong uh, arm strength wise 
a nylon brush is not going to cut it. I did see advice in some of the videos to use a nylon brush instead of a wire brush just to get the char off of the wood. So you want to brush it, scrape it off. This will remove the char as well as get down into the grain and kind of reveal the white areas of the wood again. This was absolutely not cutting it for me. It did get quite a bit off but that's just the top layer. You really wanna get down in there. So after a little bit of work, and not gonna lie, I did have my fiance help me with this part because uh, muscles. <laughs> wood crafting is no joke. I did not expect it to be this much work. The videos that I watched to learn this technique, they made it look so effortless. And it's just not the case, especially when you are someone with spaghetti arms like me. But it's still possible to do, even if you aren't the most burly person out there. It's just going to take you a little bit more time and effort. And definitely don't use a little mini wire brush like me, at least not for the bulk of it you want to get a larger wire brush that will cover more area. And keeping safety in mind, again here, it's a great idea to wear some sort of mask over your face to keep the dust particles out of your lungs, out of your nose, out of your mouth. After all the brushing is complete and you can see quite a nice contrast between the grains of wood, between the dark and the light, then you want to wipe it down with a paper towel or a rag. This will get rid of a lot of the dust and make it look even nicer. I did see some people sand it after this step, but I'm gonna show you what happened when I sanded it. It took away a lot of the detail. It took those darker areas off and I don't like that. That's not what we're going for. This part of the video is pretty exciting. It's my very first time in life using a jigsaw. Ready? Yeah. I got it! <laughs> it's not completely even, but I got it. Woohoo! My arms are vibrating. Wow, that's awesome. I'm very proud of myself for growing in wood crafting skills. I have a long way to go, but I'm getting there. Next, let me show you the, I guess, easier, I don't want to say fake way, but kind of. In this version, you still do everything basically the same. I sanded the wood. I propped it up, I got my torch out, but this time instead of trying to char the entire front of the wood, you kind of just want to color in, quote unquote, the darkest areas as dark as you can get them, but try to avoid the lighter areas. So you're almost faking or kind of rigging the process without having to do as much scraping or brushing after. Also, if you want to flip the wood right away, it's going to be really hot, so use some sort of heat protecting glove, heat resistant glove, whatever. And if this happens to be your first time or you want to do some practice pieces, I do recommend using both sides of the wood so you have more areas to practice on and it'll, you know, not cost you as much in the long run. So I did flip the board over and I did the same exact thing to the back. For this one, since I did do the front and the back, I wanted to experiment with sanding after and obviously I knew that it was going to take a lot of the contrast or the darkest parts off. Here I'm showing you that, so part of it was already sanded and here I am sanding the rest away and yeah, it's definitely a different look. But it's still a new look from just the original wood, so whichever one you prefer, you can use. After sanding, I do spray the wood down like I mentioned earlier and then I wipe away the dust. If it's raining outside, you can just stick it out in the rain and use that water instead. So the first time I used the jigsaw, my fiance was home and he set up the clamps for me and really guided me through it. Well, he was at work at this point, so this was my very first time using the saw alone, and I did pretty well, if I don't say so myself. So this time, I also tried to dampen the wood before brushing, and that actually made it easier to remove a lot of the grain, so, or between the grains. So that is something to experiment with. One of the last things I want to go over in this video is stain. So coloring the wood. I'm using Minwax wood finish, which I believe is an oil-based wood stain. 
The first one I'm showing you is Sedona Red 220. So after opening the can and mixing it up, I am just using a sponge brush, which is disposable, but it does last a few different rounds. I did let it dry overnight and it was still usable the next day. Wood stain is very, very liquidy, so you don't need a lot. A little goes a long way is what I'm trying to say. Really just follow the instructions on the can. I don't really have a lot of advice for you because this is my very first time using wood stain. Also, this video had a lot of firsts in it for me. I did stain the sides too, and then I let it sit for, uh, 15 minutes. It says to let it sit between 5 and 15 minutes. I let it sit pretty long and then wiped it off with a rag. This stuff smells pretty strong, so definitely work in a well ventilated area, wear a mask, and you can also wear gloves if you don't want to get it all over your skin. Next, I decided to test Classic Gray, which I found out very quickly behaves completely different from the red. This stuff needs to be on a lot longer in order to show up on this dark of wood. So you can see that I did try to wipe it off and you could barely tell that there was anything on the wood. So I did just brush that back on and let it sit longer. Now this is more true to what it actually looked like at the end. Lastly, let's create some artwork with this method. You can use this for anything. Build a table, a desk, side your house with it. It might take you a year to do that. I'm not gonna do anything that extreme, I don't think. At least not today. Here I have my VersaTool wood burner. It's also a soldering tool, but I use it as a very basic wood burner until I get a more professional one. After looking at the pattern in the wood for quite a while, I decided that this looks kind of like a funny fish. And there's also a fin design on top if you look closely. So I'm really gonna highlight that fin at the top by outlining with the wood burner. I put a fin at the bottom as well, and one on its body. And then I gave the guy a little eyeball. I wanted a little bit more contrast, so after doing the outline and darkening that, I went with a little piece of sandpaper and I think this is a 150. I am just going to lighten the areas around him. The absolute final thing I'm trying is this paint with a clear mixing glaze. So you can turn any paint color into a glaze. For some reason, they at Lowe's could not mix me a turquoise stain. They had a chart that had blue and green and white and other colors on it. And I said, could you please just do turquoise? And they said they had never done that. At least the workers who were there on that day, they had never done that. So this was the other option they gave me. And I'm like, okay, cool, I'll try it. So here I am mixing this concoction together. You wanna to use a lot more glaze than paint so it is more translucent. First I'm testing it on a couple of the scrap pieces, brushing it on very lightly. I came back like a half hour later and I decided that this is way too light so I added a little bit more paint into the mixture and now this is what it turned out like. So I think that's a great consistency, a great transparency to use for my art piece here. It's a fish swimming in the water, in the ocean, in the lake, wherever it is. I'm just using a regular paintbrush to apply this glaze all around the fish. I'm doing this very, very lightly with a thin coat because it doesn't really allow the wood grains to show through as much as the stain would. But since it is an underwater scene, I guess that isn't too big of a problem. I let everything sit overnight and here are the final results. I wanted to make sure that you all could see the stain and the glaze on both types of wood, the white wood and the pine. Also, I did apply it to the back of a couple pieces. So that would just be what it looks like on unburned wood. There are so many variables when it comes to stain, especially because you can leave it on the wood for different amounts of time. You can put multiple layers on. This is just a basic idea overview of what the things might turn out like for you. In all honesty, I didn't want to ruin this. So if you guys have more advice on stains or if I should use a turquoise stain, 
I just really love the contrast on this and I think it looks really great as is. So I may just put varnish on here and poly it and leave it as is. I'm not sure. Here's a little side by side. Okay, I guess I lied. So the final thing that I'm trying is a top coat. I'm using Minwax One Coat Polyurethane. So this poly coat is able to be washed off with water from the brush. So you can reuse the brush, which is great. I just applied a thin layer on top of both these pieces here and let me tell you this really really makes the contrast more heightened it makes the darks pop the lights pop it really brings out the best of both worlds as you can see when I flip this over so I highly recommend this and you actually do need to use this with the stain I believe or else the stain will wipe off over time I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that you learned something from it I am open to any and all constructive criticism anything that you have to help me out in my wood crafting journey I would really appreciate I have not polyed the fish piece yet because I think that this glaze needs to cure for a little bit longer than the stain does so there's no time to poly this yet and I also don't know if I want to change this and like kind of scrape it off and get a turquoise stain somewhere. Maybe Sherwin-Williams will be able to help me. I'm not sure. Please consider turning notifications on, ring that bell so you never miss a brand new video from me here on my channel. I have a wood burning series as well as craft kit testing and some artsy stuff. I'll also put some other videos here if you're interested in checking those out. It really helps my channel out, so I would appreciate it. I hope you guys have a great rest of the day, and I'll see you next time. Bye!